Well, I think, too, there were so many moments, like you said, you want to appeal to so many people. And there was a specific moment in the book I wanted to ask about where in during your recovery, which countless, countless surgeries, many years in the hospital and how long it took to rehabilitate to get yourself back to being functioning. Um, and it's the little things. And I think military or not, so many people, again, can relate to that. Anybody going through a tough time physically or even mentally, but there's a moment where you're in your kitchen at home and you're just trying to eat some late night cereal, mm -hmm. which so many, I can crush a box of Reese's Puffs. Oh, of like, course, a, like you wouldn't course. believe late at night. You're just trying to eat a bowl of Wheaties because it's that comfort thing, eating a bowl of cereal late at night. And at this point, your jaw and your teeth are pretty much useless. Your motor skills is something it's, you're still struggling with it. And for the first time, you kind of, you're trying to get the spoon up to your mouth and it's not, and you had been so strong for your family and everybody else around you mm -hmm. out of trying to honor them. You didn't want them to hurt seeing you hurt that finally your mom looked in and sees you with your head on the counter. And it was this bowl of cereal, this bowl of Wheaties you said that kind of broke your spirit there. Completely broke me. And you looked at her and you, you said the thing that I think you were afraid to say at the, who is ever going to love me. And I think that hit me so hard. People go through things and they feel like they're not worth it anymore whether it's mental, physical, whatever. And that I think was this huge fear that you finally like were holding and that you let out to your mom and you guys had a conversation and you decided from then on from this bowl of Wheaties on the counter at night, one night at home that you were going to fight to make your life worth it and to let other people know. And I thought that was just so it really, there was, maybe I ugly cried. Yeah. Maybe I did. <laughs> yeah. Was that your so, goal to make Kate ugly cry yeah. when you wrote that passage? <laughs> it really, Hey, uh, well, you know, it shows that it touched you, and mm -hmm. that's why I wrote it, and to connect with people. And so, I'm sorry you ugly cried. Hopefully no one saw you, but I am. Thank you for telling me that. But, yeah, that was absolutely my lowest point. And for anyone that might be confused as to why I was home, still so banged up, uh, I had spent my first three months in the hospital at Walter Reed and a few weeks down at uh, a polytrauma unit in Richmond, Virginia. And that was more of the kind of life-saving, keeping me alive. I had a trach in for months, which was um, just continuously stressful to kind of breathe through a straw. But, you know, I finished up those first three months, and at the time, there were so many casualties coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Walter Reed is the most miracle working, just incredible, amazing place on the face of the earth when it comes to caring for you and medical care. Uh, but at the time, they were completely overwhelmed. At one point, I remember just almost being dumbfounded because there were so many patients there uh, that they started putting beds and patients in the hallways. Wow. So with that said, they were building this, which is now obviously complete, this uh, Building 62, which was this amazing uh, new uh, Wounded Warrior Barracks building. But that wasn't opening until September of 2011. I was obviously injured in November of 2010. So after those first uh, three uh, months, uh, after I got a little bit more stabilized, they allowed me, knowing how much longer I had to recover there, they allowed me to go home for a few months until September when that new building was completed. So I was at home early in the spring of 2011, and yeah, I was sitting at the kitchen counter, not to even mention the struggle it took just to make the cereal. I mean, my arms the way they were, uh, I still had so many more surgeries to go. I hadn't had my nerve graft surgeries yet. It was... Uh, I mean, the, I just remember, like, the milk, it wasn't even a full gallon or half gallon, but it was, like, so heavy. I finally got it poured, and, uh, you know, that was a challenge, but then I try to eat it. I have nerve damage in my face. Most of my teeth are gone. I mean, I am in the very early stages of oral reconstructive surgeries. And so milk's going, running all down my chin. And yeah, I think up until that point, I had tried to stay so strong for my family. Because, you know, forget my physical pain or what I was going through. It was such a burden on me and so hard. And I worried day in and day out, like, 
please just leave, go back to the hotel, take a break. Like I hated that they were having to suffer through that with me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when that moment came, I'm like, I can't even eat this bowl of cereal. And I think everything leading up into that point just accumulated and I completely broke. And yeah, it was such a low point, but I'm so thankful for that moment because it allowed me to really look inside and think about and reflect in that moment. Cut out all the noise. And this is with anyone, any situation, any struggle in life. Cut out the noise, and when you really think about it, whatever life obstacles you encounter, you know, at the end of the day, you really only have two options. You can either take that small step forward, and it's okay if it takes you a week to heal, a year to heal, or a lifetime to heal. Everybody struggles unique to them. It's not a comparison, and, and that's your own time to, to get better for yourself. But when that time comes, you have to realize you have only two options. You can either get up, and even though you don't know where you're going or what even tomorrow might hold, just take that next step forward. Or, like me, you could and I could have sat at that kitchen counter for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. 